Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International, read to you by Samar Ajawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued a decree approving the agreement of establishing the Bahraini Russian Government Committee for Commercial, Economic, Scientific and Technological Cooperation. That was signed in Moscow on September the 6th, 2016. His Majesty also issued another decree regarding appointing the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism President of the Committee, requesting the Minister to appoint the members of the national team representing the Government of Bahrain in the Committee. The Royal Court has announced that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa will be at the forefront of the reception of Turkish President Rajab Tayyip Erdogan and his accompanying delegation arriving at the Kingdom of Bahrain tomorrow. The Turkish president will be on an official visit following an invitation from His Majesty the King. The two sides shall review the historic bilateral ties and means of enhancing these relations and developing them at all levels, in addition to discussing the latest regional and international issues as well as mutual interest affairs. The Royal Court would like to take this opportunity to welcome President Erdogan and his delegation, wishing them a pleasant stay in Bahrain. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the Chief Minister of Kerala, Penarai Vijayan, currently on an official visit to the Kingdom. His Majesty asserted the strength of the outstanding historic ties between the two countries, which are based on bilateral respect and joint cooperation and coordination at all levels. His Majesty the King also reviewed with the Indian official the ways of expanding the framework of collaboration in the economic investment, trade and tourism areas that would serve the interest of the two countries. His Majesty underlined the historical trade relations between Bahrain and India and their strategic locations as gateways to global trade, citing that trade exchange between the two countries began since the beginning of the last century and has flourished as a result of mutual keenness to further develop this close cooperation. In this regard, His Majesty the King recalled his successful visit to the Republic of India in 2014 that culminated in the signing of a number of memorandums of understanding that strengthened partnership between both countries in various fields. His Majesty the King also praised the leading role of India as one of the most influential on the Asian and global economies that led to achieving many successes on all economic, commercial and industrial fronts. He expressed his thanks and appreciation to the long and ongoing contribution of the Indian community to the progress march witnessed by the Kingdom that serves national economy, wishing India and its people further prosperity and development. For his part, Mr. Vajayan expressed his deep appreciation to His Majesty the King's role in alleviating the Bahraini-Indian relations and for the care of the Indian community receives, hailing the openness policy pursued by Bahrain for decades that added to the advancement of the Kingdom and its citizens, wishing these relations continued growth and improvement. The second conference of the speakers of Arab councils and parliaments currently held in Bahrain has condemned all forms of interference by Iran in the internal affairs of the kingdom, voicing full support to Bahrain's efforts in reinforcing security and stability nationwide. The conference expressed rejection of Iran's meddling in Bahrain's affairs for the aim of subverting its security and stability. It also rejected the interference of Iran in Arab internal affairs. The session chaired by Arab parliament speak to, speaker Dr. Msha'al Al-Salmi also expressed support for the Palestinian cause and condemned the hostile Israeli aggression against the Palestinian people in a bid to undermine the comprehensive peace process in the Middle East, stressing the need to strengthen solidarity among Arab countries. In a statement, Arab Parliament's chairman rejected the unjust laws that violate international norms and laws that pose a threat to sovereign immunity of Arab countries, including the Justice Against Sponsors of Terrorism Act, JASTA calling for the need to pass legislation that criminalize attempts to undermine Arab country sovereignty. The Kingdom's delegation was led by the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Mr. Ahmed bin Ibrahim al-Mullah, and also included MPs Abdul Rahman Ali Bouali and Abdul Rahman Rashid Majid. 
On the sideline of the World Arabian Horse Organization Conference event hosted by the Kingdom of Bahrain under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the conference's organizing committee hosted a dinner banquet in honor of the delegation's representatives from 41 countries. The President of Bahrain's Royal Equestrian and Endurance Races Federation and Deputy President of the Organizing Committee of the Wahoo Conference, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, welcomed the delegations, wishing them a pleasant stay in the kingdom. He hailed the efforts exerted by the organization's General Assembly and affirmed the kingdom's keenness on implementing the wise leadership vision to successfully host the event. The High Organizing Committee made sure to host the event in Rifa Fort to take advantage of the large number of participating countries to promote traditional places in Bahrain. The participants expressed thanks for the Bahraini hospitality, appreciating the role of the chairman of the High Organizing Committee, son of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and his directives that aided the success of the conference. The General Assembly of the World Arabian Horse Organization held a meeting in which they discussed a number of important topics on their agenda and the participating delegations presented official reports and accomplishments regarding purebred Arabian horses during the years of 2015 and 16. The President of the Royal Jordanian Equestrian Federation and member of the Executive Committee of the World Arab Horse Organization, Princess Alia bint al Hussein, hailed Bahrain's hosting of the conference expressing appreciation for the royal patronage and interest in the conference of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of the High Organizing Committee of the conference and son of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa. Princess Alia affirmed the importance of arranging regular meetings for the organization that enhance the support of purebred Arabian horses around the world. A member of the executive committee, David Angled, presented the challenges that the organization faces, expressing hope that it would improve in the following years. The Wahoo Bahrain 2017 conference concluded its third day, it being a vital meeting that ensures the well-being of Arabian horse communities and registries worldwide. We have these conferences once every two years somewhere around the world, which gives us the opportunity to deal with pedigrees and other important things for the breeding of Arabian horses and it also gives our members a chance to see horses in different parts of the world and the Bahraini horses are, are the traditional Arab horses they are the real originals so we are delighted to be here to see them. The conference was both educational and fun and was also a chance for the Waho members to meet fascinating people from all over the world, as well as experience the rich culture of Bahrain and see its remarkable purebred Arabian horses. It's our first time in Bahrain, uh, hopefully not the last. Uh, the weather is great, everything is really, really good, the organization, the food, the people, everyone is really, really nice. Uh, it's nice to see uh, such a beautiful country where people are so warm and uh, Vaho is really one big family, very great atmosphere and everything is, has been great. I own an Arabian horse magazine so I have an interest in events such as this but I'm also a life member of Waho. Um, I think it's very important that the younger generations, not I'm that young, get involved and keep supporting all the work that's been done before because the Arabian horse has such a big rich history and we need to preserve that. To, the opportunity to come to Bahrain was one I couldn't actually resist. Um, I haven't been on a Waho conference yet. This is my first one because of timing. And Bahrain is an amazing country. I'm actually quite taken aback how much history there is here. For the second time and once again facilitated an exceptional event. The conference will go on until the 15th of February. The Wahoo Bahrain 2017 conference continues its third day, bringing together a great number of expertise and showcasing the finest of Bahrain's Arabian horse. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. Before he concluded his official visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain this evening, the Chief Minister of Kerala, His Excellency Pinarai Vijayan, was the guest of honor at the Bahrain Kerala Business Investment Forum earlier today, hosted by Lulu Group Chairman and Managing Director, Yusuf Ali, in collaboration with the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry. In the presence of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry board members, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Mr. Zaid Azayani, Bahrain Economic Development Board CEO, Khaled al Indian Ambassador to Bahrain, 
Alok uh, Kumar Sina, and other senior officials and business leaders from Bahrain and India. Daniela Deporto has this report. The Chief Minister of Kerala, His Excellency Pinarai Vijayan, conducted his official visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain at the invitation of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, following his fruitful state visit to the South Indian state in 2013. Enhancing bilateral trade and investment was a priority of the trip, as exemplified by the Bahrain Kerala Investment Forum that took place today, which attracted leading figures representing Bahrain and India from the public and private sectors. Kerala play an important part in Bahrain. Uh, they form 20% of the population. They contribute in the, to the business. They contribute big time in the workforce. And uh, they are very important to us. We look forward uh, to found and create new businesses with Kerala. Kerala is famous with the, I mean, with the agriculture, fruit, vegetable, and all agriculture uh, pr uh, product. I would say. So we look forward to 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 do a lot. We are looking forward to go to Kerala, and we're looking forward to the Keralas to come to Bahrain and invest, as they are many of them here in Bahrain. But we would like to see more of them. The, 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 I mean, the beautiful visit of the Honorable Minister, Chief Minister, I mean, it will, I mean, pave the way green for both Bahraini and uh, Kerala's people to produce more business and to have more better relations. In, from Kerala people, they can come ha and have a joint venture in Bahrain in different ways because Bahrain is a beautiful country, is a very, you know, safe country, secured country, and investor friendly, easy to do business. So people can also see how they can come and have a joint venture. And also the Bahrainis, those who are investing outside, they can look about Kerala and they can also have joint ventures in Kerala also. So this is all mutual benefit. The forum consisted of a number of speeches and an expert panel session examining both markets in detail and highlighting ways to leverage opportunities in a mutually beneficial way. As both nations are in a growth and development phase, they are seeking to learn from each other as well as conduct business together, in line with a close historic relationship shared. Areas of mutual economic interest include agriculture and ICT development, as well as human capital development, and ways of facilitating trade and investment through legislation and trade agreements. We all know India has shifted in the last couple of decades from being one of the third countries, now they are one of the world leaders. And they did this by services. They moved from industry and shifted to services. They are using human beings, educated, highly educated people. Their universities are quite good. They are very good, as a matter of fact. And they prepared people. So what we can do in Bahrain, what could be the outcome of this? India is the biggest source of FDI uh, that we've noticed, at least in the EDB, in the last year. So I think that as a country, we see huge potential for us to do much more inward investment into Bahrain from India. And I think this is the opportunity to build on the relationship that we have with, uh, with India and Kerala specifically. And I hope that we can uh, you know, increase the inward investment and perhaps look at also outward investment into Kerala from Bahrain. We should, as our Crown Prince vision, 2030, so IT should become prominent in this island, like uh, Bahrain should become an IT hub. So this is what we are planning. And we all know for women, it has been given lots of support in Bahrain. And, uh, you know, 27 percentage of the board members are women. So we feel very proud and happy for all the support what's given by the Bahrain government. While the official state visit might conclude this evening, the catalytic effect it will have on Bahraini-Indian relations will be long-lived, especially in economic terms. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Danielle Deporto.